Well, hello, hello, hello to everybody in our amazing community. It's Teresa Sanderson, and I'm super excited to welcome you to our next episode of the Nurse Entrepreneur Spotlight. This is our weekly interview of a nurse entrepreneur who has just uh, decided and dared to do nursing differently. Our guest today is Deanna Cooper Gillingham, and um, Deanna is the founder of the Case Management Institute. Um, which provides educational products and services for nurses who are aspiring to become certified case managers um, and as well um, to, to just help keep them up to date and up to speed with the education they require to fulfill those roles. So Deanna, I just want to welcome you today um, to our Nurse Entrepreneur Spotlight and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really, really excited to talk to you. Oh, this is so wonderful. So wonderful. So we're just going to dive right in today. Why don't you, if you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit more of what your business is all about. And then from there, we'll talk a little bit about what your journey has been like. Okay. Sure. So um, as you said, my name is Deanna Cooper Gillingham. I have a business called Case Management Institute. We started off with a book to provide a resource for nurse case managers and case managers in general, not just nurses, who wanted to get certified with one particular certification. And um, we've kind of grown from there. We've um, found other needs. People have brought to us other issues in the area and we try to address them as best we can as long as they fall within our scope. I love that. I love that. And um, just as an aside, I think I became familiar with you back in 2017 or 2016, probably when I began studying for the CCM exam. And that was the only resource out there. You know, it was the only thing. And all I kept hearing was, you've got to get Deanna Cooper's book. You've got to get Deanna's book. And, um, you know, that's going to be the key to you passing the test. And lo and behold, so thank you, girl. <laughs> You're welcome. And that actually makes me very proud because we, um, at that point, we had done absolutely no paid advertising. And, and even to this day, we have done the time very little because word of mouth. Um, so yeah. I want to thank you and oh, everybody okay. who had said you need to get Deanna's book because yeah. that's really why we are where we are today. That's incredible. That's incredible. You know, and it's, it's that old age old thing that there is nothing better, right. Than a word of mouth referral. I think there's, Absolutely. there's still nothing better. Um, so awesome. That is so great. So Tell me a little bit. I know you've been a nurse about as long as I have, and that's right around the 30 year mark, I think, you and I both. And so tell us a little bit about what your life was like working as an RN before you started your business. Oh, gosh. So when I way back when I was in nursing school, and I'll, I'll make this brief, but every rotation I had, except for peds and psych, I was like, I love this. I want to do this. Like, I just, I really love nursing and everything about it. I love ICU. I loved oncology. I loved everything. So um, when I look back now, I realized I got to do just about everything that I wanted to do with my nursing career, which was great. Labor and delivery was, is like my most passionate love that I, you know, it's my favorite, but I've done a little bit of everything. I've done hospice. I've, I always say I brought them in and I took them out and everything in between. And I did, you know, I worked on the floor, like many of your the people watching have, um, I worked in an outpatient clinic. Um, I, like I said, I did a little bit of everything. I worked for home care. I worked for home hospice. I probably worked in just about every area that you can work in as a nurse. <laughs> um, but that still didn't make it any easier when I had to leave nursing um, and bedside nursing. So um, whenever you're ready, we can kind of get into that story. Sure, sure. Well, why don't you, yeah, tell us a little bit about that because I think it was just, it was one injury <laughs> as I recall, and, and it might not have even seemed like a big injury, I think at the time. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, share that with us. What took you into the entrepreneurial world? So um, I was taking the children and the dogs for a walk and they were doing some construction behind our house and it was a beautiful fall day and everything was going wonderful. And they had these big piles of dirt um, where they were moving land around mm -hmm. and you know we were walking the dogs up and the kids were jumping around and having a great time and me not realizing my age at the time which i was younger than i am now but still too old to be jumping from one big pile of dirt to another and i landed wrong on my ankle and it just like snapped <laughs> and oh. it wasn't broken it was nothing like that it just swole you know it was swollen for a day or two mm -hmm. but um you know it never really got better i mean i worked for a, another couple of years 
but it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I was doing, you know, I went from the OR where I was standing doing C-sections for, you know, eight hours, 12 hours a day to an eight hour a day job, went to an outpatient clinic thinking that that would be the answer. Um, I couldn't even do a four hour shift by the end of it. And it was just oh without God. the next day having to put my foot up for the, you know, for 24 hours, which, you know, and just trying to work my schedule around it. So a friend of mine had told me for a couple of years that I needed to get into case management. And I was like, no, I like to, you know, touch my patients. I like to start IVs. I like to do all of that fun stuff. You know, I want right. to draw blood. I want to do, I want to be in the OR and get my hands dirty. And I just, I fought it and I fought it and I fought it until my body told me you can sit behind a desk and that's about all you can do. So I did, I went into case management and I learned to love case management too. Um, it was nice. a different focus. Um, I still got to love on my patients, but in a different way. And one of the great things that I loved about it was everywhere else I worked when I worked in ICU or anywhere else, I saw my patient for a very small amount of time. And then I sent them off to the next level of care. Right. But with case management, I was working with complex case management. So people who maybe had mm -hmm. um, a diagnosis of something like a cancer or mm -hmm. a traumatic brain injury or a stroke. And I was taking these people from the initial word that you have this mm -hmm. up until their new normal. And when they were comfortable with their new normal, love so it, it was the entire progression. And I love it. I really loved it. And um, so I learned that I could transition that, you know, love of nursing into another way of loving and caring for my patients. I love that. And so when you moved from the bedside into case management, was this a telephonic kind of role? Was this a home-based yes. or remote or office or? Yes. So it was, I was actually working in an office okay. and that yeah. was, you know, that satisfied them not needing to stand mm -hmm. for you know, our entire shifts as we do as nurses, you know, I went from doing 20,000 steps a day to like a thousand steps a day, which was yeah. really weird, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but other than that, um, I, my end goal was always to work from home. Cause I just thought mm -hmm. that would be the ultimate freedom mm -hmm. until I got there. And then I realized, no, I still was chained to a desk, you know, for eight hours a day, yep, which led yep. me to my business, which you know, that's kind of how everything happened. It was like, I went to an office. Um, I got my certification so that I could get another job and work mm -hmm. from home. Okay. I worked from home and I loved that, but there was just still something about not having the freedom to do what I wanted, when I wanted, take vacation when I wanted. Have an um, interview on the beach kind of thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it, it it all started actually when my aunt um, was diagnosed with cancer and she lived nine hours away from me. And so I was taking long weekends and driving up there. And I was thinking like, what if this ever happened to my mother or somebody like how I couldn't not be that far from her. And even right. though I worked remotely, they still wanted you to be in your home office. You had mm -hmm. to, you know, there was HIPAA. Of course we can't be just anywhere. We can't be at Starbucks talking to patients, obviously. Right. And so um, I realized that I still, wanted a little bit more freedom. And that's when I decided that the, um, I wanted to, to do a business and mm -hmm. the opportunity for the book came up and it kind of just kind of meshed in there to where maybe mm -hmm. this is what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. That is so great. And I think, um, you know, when you and I had talked before, you mentioned that you had noticed some gaps, I think, in what other nurses were having trouble with learning to pass the course or just gaps in what was available as far as the different domains of case management and stuff like that. And then led to your book. And, and so I just, I love that idea because people always say, find a need and fill it, you know, and that's exactly what you did. You saw that this need was here for this type of education to prepare nurses for the exam. And you were able to fill that need and, you know, your business just took off. So that's fantastic. That is Thank just you. fantastic. You're welcome. You're welcome. So now, how would you say, you know, I know <laughs> you and I joke a little about the entrepreneurial life, but um, how would you say your life has changed since you've started your business and, you know, you've seen the success that you've seen as compared to the life you had when you were working on the floor as, an, as a nurse, how has your life changed? So I think 
the best way to answer that is to tell to let everybody know that I did love nursing and mm -hmm. working on the floor and all of that. It was never that I did not like it. It was just that it interfered with my lifestyle. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, True. <laughs> but you know, I like to be spontaneous. And if an opportunity comes up, I don't like that. I have to have my schedule out six weeks in advance because mm -hmm. I don't know what I might want to do in six weeks or what opportunities might come up in six weeks. And um, I have learned and it's taken me a long time through my entrepreneurial journey of what exactly I like. And um, I like writing books and I like courses because I can do it and then have it be out there and not be tied down to teaching. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I thought at one point I thought, oh, maybe I'll go back for all these degrees and teach. And I'm like, because I love teaching, but mm -hmm. not when somebody else tells me I have to be there and I have to be teaching. So it's the freedom. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs really stress that it's the freedom. I am not afraid of hard work. And mm -hmm. every entrepreneur will tell you, you have to be able to be willing to work hard. Mm -hmm. But I also like to be able to take a lot of time off. And sometimes that's a month at a time. Sometimes it's just a day. Sometimes you know, I might work for two weeks straight, but that's my choice because I know I'm taking a month off and mm -hmm. I want to be able to do that comfortably. So I, it's the freedom. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And I think that is so great. And, you know, nurses, I think when I became a nurse 31 years ago, I remember, you know, it was a, it was a switch for me going from a music and vocal major to becoming a nurse, but it was a practical choice because I was getting married you know, starting a family, all those kind of things. But at the same time, I, and, and quite honestly, I don't know if anybody thinks it through when they go through nursing school, you know, the every other weekend or every third weekend, you know, it's going to be days, evenings or nights, sometimes a little of all of it. And the <laughs> holidays. Yeah. And yes, holidays. And so I don't know that anybody ever really thinks all that's all that through, you know, as they get started as a nurse, but it be quickly becomes the reality. As soon as you graduate, you know, you're there. And for somebody like you, who's more of a free spirit, wants to be able to, you know, maintain that lifestyle of freedom, that I'm sure that would be very confining. I know it has been for me too. And for me, it's been more on just the kind of the family side of things. Um, I'm more of a huggy, <laughs> you know, uh, I want to see everybody at the holidays and all of that kind of thing. And, and um, even though my kids are all adults, you know, it's still vitally important for me that we have that time. And I don't know, call me crazy. I guess I'm just like every other <laughs> woman out there. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Oh, gosh. So one of the things I wanted to chat with you about, um, Deanna, is that I always try and educate nurses and nurse entrepreneurs about the importance of having multiple income streams. I think that is very, very important, you know, and that one of the signs of not having multiple income streams is that you are, you're in a job you hate and you feel stuck there because you're tied to the paycheck and you feel like, I don't know how to do anything else. So multiple income streams just means we don't have all, all of our eggs in one basket um, financially. Can you share with us a little bit about the different kinds of income streams that you've developed since you started your business? Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that I found very interesting was when I decided to go full time with my business, everybody was like, you're quitting your job, your security. And I'm like, how secure is that? I'm working for one person. And if that one person says, we well, don't need you anymore, I go to nothing. Mm -hmm. And the way that I have set up my business is very much the way you have just pointed out where there's multiple income streams so that if any one thing dries up and, and I do have a story of something that happened that mm -hmm. um, took away one of our income streams for a short period of time, but we had had other income streams to make up for it. So we have a book. Mm -hmm. um, it started off with CCM certification made easy, which was the one you were referring to that mm -hmm. helps people to pass the certified case manager exam. Yep. And um, that turned into a course. And I actually collaborated with another case manager with that. So we have a collaboration. Um, and then that led to people were telling me that they were using the CCM prep book and giving it to their new case managers because they needed a foundation. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, this is for advanced people. Like, I assume that you know what certain terms mean and things mean. And to me, it would be like drinking from a 
fire hose trying to understand that. So mm -hmm. I did realize that way back when I first became a case manager, it was very hard for me to even know. I tell people this story all the time. I didn't even know what a case manager was and they gave me the job and I'm like, wait a minute, how can you give me this job? I don't even know what it is. And they're like, oh, we can train you how to do it. And I'm like, okay. They're like, no, you got, you got what it takes. We'll train you. Don't worry. And I'm like, I'm quitting a job to go to a job where I don't even know what it is. So I wanted to, I wanted people to have a foundation when they started to at least understand nice. what it was. So we went back and we wrote the foundation level book and course. So now we Love. have, you know, the foundation level course. And then we had people reaching out to us about utilization management. And we just happened to um, be able to have a collaboration with MCG, which is one of the top mm -hmm. providers out there of a, of a software that helps with that. And oh, nice. we collaborated with them. So now we have multiple streams of income. We have our, I call it our foundation series, which has three courses and a book. And mm -hmm. then we have our CCM prep series, which actually has another two courses and a book. So we have multiple streams of income coming in. And then we do some other things too. Like I just published um, a colleague's book. So we started getting into the publishing arena. Well, Self-publishing. So yeah, we're publishing other people's things awesome. now. And yeah, just kind of dabbling in a couple other things too to kind of make ourselves nice. a little more spread out. Nice. I think that is just fantastic. And I, and so important, you know, there is nothing certain in this world. And I think we've all seen in the last two years since the, you know, advent of the global pandemic that life can just turn on a dime. And Truly, we don't have any security. And the thing is, if we can take care of ourselves and create an economy around ourselves and our family, we can survive and we can thrive. So I just love, love, love hearing your example. Congratulations on all yeah. of those successes. Um, let's see. Now, I did want to share um, your educational level with the group. One of the things that you and I resonate with is the idea that nurses do not need any more formal education to be able to start a business, right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those little pet peeves of mine when I'm talking with somebody and they're so excited and they're like, okay, I'm going to go back to school. Should I go back for healthcare management or business? And I'm like, why are you going back to school? And they're like, well, so I can learn how to run a business. And I'm like, I learned how to run a business and I have an associate degree in nursing. So if I can do it, I think you can do it too. I, I absolutely love that. Thank you so much for being, you know, so candid and, and willing to share that. I myself am also an ADN and I think it's so important, you know, formal education doesn't guarantee any more success or happiness for the nurse. And I've chatted with so many, I would say too many people who have gone after their nurse practitioner degree and high level degrees, just to say, all I got was more of the same. You know, I, yes. I got no life balance out of it. The money wasn't really worth it, in my opinion. You know, why did I even more responsibility, it? more student loan debt. And now they are, I, you know, it, the, in entrepreneurship, we call it the golden handcuffs where you have created such a lifestyle and you have a job that supports that lifestyle and you can't leave it because mm -hmm. you can't do anything else that will support that. Now, I beg to differ because one of the reasons why I wanted to, wanted to become an entrepreneur is I knew I, I was a hard worker. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I, I can meet my metrics. I can do what I have to do. And I don't need anybody to tell me what I need to do. I know what I need to do and I can go out there and do it. Whether yep. I'm in the hospital, whether I'm, you know, working it behind a desk, I know what to do. And one day it, I was talking with a friend and we were like, if we ever had a business, we would want employees just like us because we're hard workers. And then I was like, well, why can't I have my own business and be my own employee and be my own boss and mm -hmm. do that? And you are, you are always capped when you work for somebody else. You are mm -hmm. always capped at the amount of money that you will ever be able to make. And it's based on what they are willing to value you at. But right. when you work for yourself, you can continue to create multiple streams of income. You can create one and then another and another, and there is no, there's no cap. There's no ceiling to the amount of money that you'll be able to make when you work for yourself versus when you work for someone else. I love seeing that. And um, this morning, I just read an article that was published in the New York Times that said, um, nurses have finally figured out or 
finally learn their value or their worth. And I think, um, you know, you talk about salary capping and right now with the legislation that's trying to be pushed through to cap the salaries of agency staffers and what agency staffing uh, companies can charge um, here in the United States, I just think um, I'm appalled that this can even happen. It doesn't happen um, to anybody else, but it would happen to us. It would happen to nurses. And I just think this is so crazy. And, uh, but yeah. And so I just, I love the idea that we can create what it is that we need. And truth be told, like you said, we don't need any additional education or anything like that to do it. When I talk to people about that and say that a business coach may be a good thing, but that's different than going in and getting your master's degree or your Absolutely. nurse practitioner certificate. <laughs> Unless you, you know, you really want to be that prescribing person. If that's you and what you right. want, then formal education is all for you. And I if, you, you if I have a neurosurgeon, I want to know that he went to school for neurosurgery. <laughs> didn't okay. Google it. <laughs> he did not Google it. But there's something I truly 100% believe in just in time learning. And mm. I believe that, you know, when... I also very much believe in business coaches mm -hmm. and because they will help, you know, that's, that's the hard thing with just in time learning is knowing what do I need to know right now? Because everybody's out there telling you, you need to learn Facebook ads. You need to learn how to make mm -hmm. videos. You need to learn how to, whatever it is, build mm -hmm. your own website or do this or that. And with a coach, they can tell you because they're looking at it from a different level mm -hmm. and they're saying the next right step for you is this. And mm -hmm. so I 100% agree that if, if you're going to spend your money on education, spend it on the right education and not to say that formal education may not be the right thing. If you want to be able to prescribe, you need to have a, you know, the education that will exactly. give you the license that will let you do that. Mm -hmm. But if that's not what you want to do and you want to start a business, there are mm -hmm. plenty of places where you can learn everything you need to know just when you need to learn it. When you go to business school, exactly. you learn everything in four years, and then you don't put it, then you don't do anything with it until after you graduate. When yep. you learn just in time, it's like, okay, I need to know marketing. Let me go look up some marketing YouTube videos and let me figure it out. Or you, exactly. know, you, you do it in a different way. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I just, I just love this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's all so important because, um, Nurses have the characteristics of wonderful entrepreneurs. They are problem solvers. They are self-starters. They get the job done. They get the job done on time. And just all of these things that are built into the career and psyche of a nurse that just, why could you not hang out your own shingle? And don't tell anybody, but nurses will, they know it needs to be done and they do it. And then they ask for permission later. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> we don't want to tell anybody, but we, we know, we know what needs to be done and we just do it. And, yeah. and an entrepreneur, you do the same thing. You know, what exactly. needs to be done. You don't need a boss to tell you that you need mm -hmm. to do it. You know, what needs to be done and you do it. And the results speak for themselves. Exactly. Exactly. All right. We're getting down to the wire here. So what is one piece of advice, Deanna, that you would want any aspiring or emerging nurse entrepreneur to know? What, what would you want to share with that nurse who's thinking, I'd like to start a business of my own. I don't know how. I'd like to start my own business. Am I qualified? I you know, don't know where to begin. This is a great question. And you know, there are so many resources out there and so many people out there that have done it and are willing to help and guide and lead. Um, Teresa, you are a wonderful example of that. And, you know, um, honestly, I, I, from day one, I've always had coaches or somebody that I listen to because my theory has always been at my age that I'm not, you know, I'm not 18. I'm not 20. I'd rather learn from somebody else's mistakes. <laughs> True. So, so let me find somebody else who's already done everything and let them guide me and steer me in the right direction. So honestly, that if it's one piece of advice, that would be the one piece of advice. If I could give another, it's act, do, do something. Don't spend mm -hmm. so much time frozen in the decision-making. And, you know, 
the worst thing that happens is you make the wrong decision, but it's not mm -hmm. like nursing. Nurses were so afraid of making the wrong decision. If we give the wrong med, if we do something wrong, it could be a life or death situation. In business, it's not. In business, yeah. if you make the wrong decision, it's kind of funny because you look at it and you say, whoop, well, that wasn't the right thing. Let me try this over here. And you yeah. can just keep trying it until you figure it out. And it and it's fun. It's like a game. It's a choose your own adventure game. So, <laughs> so don't be afraid if you open the wrong door and you have to close it and you have to go somewhere else. But the good thing is with a coach or somebody that you can trust, then you'll open less wrong doors. We'll just say, that. You won't, it's not that you won't open any wrong doors because that's mm -hmm. just part of the learning process, but it'll give you a more direct path to where you want to go. Oh my gosh. I love that advice. And, and I agree. I think, um, you can shave years off of your progress by chatting with somebody who's been there, working with somebody who's been there before. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Now, lastly, I want to thank you for being our guest here today, Deanna. We're coming to the end of this awesome interview. Um, I just want to give you a few minutes here to tell our audience how they can find you, connect with you, um, grab your great resources for uh, case management. So the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. So um, we do have a free video that gives you one continuing nursing education unit, a CNE, okay. yeah. um, and it is on case management and utilization management as career options for nurses. And I feel kind of funny saying that after telling people they need to start their own business. But um, I will say that when I went into that, it allowed me to start a business because I had a Monday through Friday, nine to five type of job. I had my evenings where I could work on my business. I had my weekends where I could work on my business. So it is a, it is a nice career option for somebody who's maybe while they're doing their business as a side hustle. But mm -hmm. if anybody's interested, um, it, it talks about the two because they're very different. And a yes. lot of people say, I want to work from home. So I want to do one or the other. And I'm like, you need to know which one you want because they're very different. And mm -hmm. if you're happy with one, you probably won't be happy with the other. And if it's okay with you, I would like to um, just mention that I have a podcast, the stay at home oh, nurse. Yeah. It's the stay at home nurse podcast. And um, we actually have been on hiatus for about a year, but I will be bringing it back soon. But there are a lot of back episodes out there specifically just for inspiration for nurses that want to start a business. Um, towards the end of last year, I interviewed a a couple nurses who went full-time with their business during the pandemic. And they're just so inspirational to hear these nurses with a variety of different businesses Love that it. were able to, instead of being a nurse that's at the bedside working themselves to death during the pandemic, they were able to step away and make enough money on their business to support themselves and their families. So um, I would invite you to go look up those episodes and be inspired and, you know, that's one of the things I recommend for people too. Is you need a little inspiration every day. So whether it's watching one of Teresa's videos, you know, being in her Facebook group, just something every single day to keep you moving and keep you inspired. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those great resources. So the podcast was called the stay at home nurse. Yes. Okay. The stay at home nurse podcast. Be sure and look that up and um, you can find the case management Institute is it casemanagementinstitute.com? Yep, Dot that's com. It. Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Super easy. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Again, Deanna, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you. Um, wish I was where you are. That looks beautiful <laughs> back there. <laughs> but um, we will get together again soon for our next episode of the Nurse Entrepreneur Spotlight. If you desire to be interviewed here, please feel free to reach out to me, send me an email or send me a personal message and I will get you the information so we can get your business featured on the Nurse Entrepreneur Spotlight. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.